So today we're gonna be grilling up this beautiful dry aged prime rib. Just look at the marveling on this guy. It's absolutely incredible. You can smell the dry aging flavors and intensity on this roast. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a rub. And for that, we're gonna go in with coarse ground black pepper, an equal part of granulated garlic, and then an equal part of salt. Now we're using kosher salt. You can use any salt you want as long as it's not iodized. Now, just shake that up. Perfect. Now that we've got our rub, we're just gonna go in with a binder. This'll just make sure that the rub's gonna stick to the roast. We're just using extra virgin olive oil here. We're going in nice and low and slow for this guy, so we don't need to worry about using an oil that has a high smoke point. Perfect. And now we'll just season away. Now with a cut this large, you don't have to worry about over seasoning. I promise you, while this might look like a lot of seasoning, it's not gonna actually taste like it. These are huge slabs of prime rib here. So it's all we're doing is coating the outside. Make sure you get your sides as well. And of course, the underside Perfect, and now that we've got this all rubbed up, we're gonna go in with two temp probes, one on each side. Now, one of the sides of this prime rib is a little bit thicker than the other, so you wanna have a meat probe on each side just to make sure that you're monitoring temps on both sides of this so that one end doesn't end up cooking faster than the other. So we've got our meters in, now let's go fire up the grill and get this on. So we're gonna be doing this prime rib on our pellet grill, so we're just gonna set the temp to 255 and get this started. So we'll let this warm up for about 15 minutes before we get our protein on there. So we've got some heirloom carrots here along with some broccoli and cauliflower. So we're just gonna get these onto a baking tray and this is gonna go in underneath the prime rib. So as it's roasting away, all the fat and renderings are gonna drip down into our veg. So we'll go on with a little olive oil on here as well. Then we'll hit it with a little bit of salt. Now we'll get this mixed up. Make sure we get all that oil coated on all sides of the veg here. Perfect, sounds like we just hit temp. So now it's time to get this and the prime rib roast into the trigger. So we'll get this opened up, get our veg on below. Now we'll get our prime rib roast right up top. Close this down and we'll let this cook away. All right, so we're using the meter here, so we're just gonna go into the app and we're gonna set up a cook. So in order to pick a tar target temp, we'll pick beef. We're doing a ribeye roast. We'll set our temp here at 120. We're gonna start our cook. Now it'll even give us an estimated cook time based on the ambient temp inside the pellet grill. So we're setting it at a target of 120. At that point, we're gonna get the grill ripping hot and then we'll give it a good sear right at the end until we hit our internal of 130 to 135. So now we're just gonna put together a little something to baste our roast with. So we've got a small cast iron pan with, this is a quarter cup of butter. Now we're gonna use some garlic. So we've got three cloves of garlic. We're just gonna cut up small little slices here. You can just mince this or get it in a garlic press if you prefer. We like little slices. Now we'll get our garlic on top of the butter. Now we'll get a few sprigs of thyme here. Try to de-stem this as best you can. Now we'll get the thyme in there. And now with about an hour left in the cook, we're gonna put this on the smoker. So this will melt down and then we'll just slowly baste the roast in this butter garlic thyme mix. It's gonna add a really nice flavor profile to the exterior, add a little more richness from the butter and that thyme, the aromatics from the garlic, it's gonna be beautiful. So we've just hit an internal of 100 degrees on the thickest part of this prime rib. 
So now it's time to open it up. We'll get our butter mixture on here and it's starting to melt down. So we've got 20 degrees left in this cook and you can see we've got the fat rendering down into the veg at the bottom. Those are gonna be absolutely delicious. And then when this butter, thyme and garlic mixture melts down, we'll start basting that roast. This is gonna be fantastic. So you'll see here, we've actually got our prime rib trussed up and we asked our butcher to do that for us. And the reason is it just tightens up the muscle and the roast over the course of the cook. And as the roast starts to contract as it heats up, it tries to keep that roast in a more uniform shape. And that's gonna allow it to cook more evenly. Now, right now, our temp probes are reading about a 10 degree temperature difference from one edge to the other, but that's okay. One of these sides we're gonna do to medium rare, and the other side will be more medium. There's some people in our family that prefer the medium, so it's actually nice to have a bit of a temperature gradient from one edge to the next. Now for the veg, we're just gonna pull out this tray here. We're gonna wanna turn these, make sure that we're getting these nice and evenly roasted. They're actually coming along pretty well here right now. I'd say they're almost done. So I might leave these on for maybe just another half hour before taking them off. So we're just checking in here on our butter, thyme, and garlic mix. We're just gonna take a bundle of thyme and start basting our prime rib. Just look at this. Now this is gonna make sure that it maintains a really nice moisture profile over the course of this last little bit of the cook. And it's gonna add another layer of richness as well, just with all that butter. Now we're gonna get some of this garlic down on there. You'll see some of the thyme will just naturally come off onto your prime rib as well, and that's fine. So we'll let this get back on the grill here for another five minutes, and then we'll baste it one last time. This smells wonderful. That thyme, the garlic, the smoke from the roast, the aged beef. I cannot wait to dig into this. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. And for this last piece, I'm just gonna get all that butter on there and then take our garlic and make sure we get that all across the roast. Beautiful. Get this pushed back in here, close it down for that last 10 degrees. So we just registered 120 on the thick part of this prime rib. So we're gonna get it out, just let it rest for a minute here. Just look at that. So we're also gonna take the vegetables off at this time. Just look at how well these have roasted up. And we've got all the rendering from the roast and even that butter that we topped it with. So now we're gonna get the temp cranked here to 450. You know what, we're gonna go even higher. We're gonna get the temp cranked to 475. We'll let that warm up for 15 minutes and then we'll get the rib roast back on there. So we've got this up to temp. We're just gonna take our roast, get that back on here. You can just hear that sear away. So at that high temp, it's gonna help to build up a nice bark and crust around the outside, crisp up that fat cap. So we're gonna let this go until we read 130 on the thickest part of the prime rib. All right, we just hit an internal temp of 130. Look at that, that's crisped up beautifully. So we're just gonna get this off onto our cutting board here. Now we're just gonna loosely cover this or tent this in foil and we'll get this inside to rest. So we've had this resting just loosely tented in foil for about 30 minutes. One end of this roast is registering 134, the other is 150. So again, that's gonna be a really nice medium rare on one side and more of a medium on the other. So we're gonna cut off our trusses here. Now, one thing we asked our butcher to do before we picked up this roast was actually carve the bones off and then retruss it up. And that just makes it really easy at this point because you don't have to worry about carving these bones off. You've just got your prime rib right here. So I'll set these aside. Now don't lose these, these are absolutely delicious. They're packed with flavor. But let's carve in and see how this turned out. Now 
Now, you, the beauty of doing this yourself is you can cut these as thick as you want. We're cutting some really solid, probably three quarter inch slabs here for the family. And this is just a beautiful medium, medium rare. I want you to bring you in nice and close here just to check that out. So look at that. Juices are still flowing. Beautiful crust and bark on the outside. A little bit of that smoke ring. The fat cap has crisped up nicely here. We've got all that salt, pepper, garlic seasoning on here. This is gonna be absolutely phenomenal. So we're gonna get the rest of this carved up and we're gonna go inside, have dinner with the family here. I appreciate you sticking with us through this video. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. It really helps our channel pushing these videos out there. You can like them. And if you thought we deserved it, consider subscribing to the channel for more of these recipes to come. Thanks for tuning in.